Hello friends, welcome to the discussion on peroxisomal disorders, which is a topic very frequently being asked in the competitive exams nowadays. Okay, so I will discuss about first what is a peroxisome. Peroxisome is a cell organelle which is involved in certain unique functions like beta oxidation of very long chain fatty acids, alpha oxidation of a special substance called phytanic acid. It is also involved in the synthesis of a phospholipid called plasmalogen. When we look into the peroxisomal disorders, they are of two types. The first type is where there is a defect in the transport of the proteins into the peroxisomes defect in the transport which is called as a peroxisomal biogenesis disorder okay disorders of peroxisomal biogenesis this is the first type the second type is where the peroxisomes are normal but there is a defect in the enzymes within the peroxisomes okay there is a defect in the enzymes within the peroxisomes you should know the classical examples for this disorders okay the first group that is a defect in the transport the example classical example is the zellweger syndrome there are other disorders also but the most important to remember is the zellweger syndrome very commonly questions are asked about this topic next the sex the next group is the disorders of the peroxisomal enzymes here you have two classical disorders one is the x-linked adreno leukodystrophy x-link adreno leukodystrophy this is abbreviated as ald this is abbreviated as ald the third one is the refsem disease the refsem disease right in general all the peroxisomal disorders are autosomal recessive in inheritance except as suggested by the name itself adreno leukodystrophy is x-link recessive in inheritance and another MCQ for you is the most common peroxisomal disorder is X-linked adrenoleukodystrophy. This is the most common peroxisomal disorder. Now we will have a uh, brief discussion about the manifestations of different disorders from the exam point of view. First, I will discuss about the Zellweger syndrome. First, I will discuss about the Zellweger syndrome. As I told you, Zellweger syndrome is a problem of transport of proteins into the peroxisomes. Okay, and for your exams, you need to remember that the gene which is defective is PEX, P-E-X gene, PEX gene, which codes for a protein called peroxin, which codes for a protein called peroxin. This is the one which is defective in almost all cases of Zellweger syndrome. So, you know that Zellweger syndrome is a peroxisomal disorder. What would be the clinical features of Zellweger syndrome? Okay, which is very important in the identification of this condition. Okay, number one is the typical facies of the child. Is the typical facies of the child. Okay, what are the features of this feature? They have in general a flat facial profile. Flat facial profile. The facies appear flat. The occiput appears flat. The nose appears flat. Okay. Second is the hypertelorism. Hypertelorism with the presence of epicanthal folds. Third is that the child will have profound hypotonia. Hypotonia. Okay. It has been described that because of these features, okay, you can mistake this child with a Zellweger syndrome as a child with a Down syndrome. Okay. So the features of Zellweger syndrome, especially the facies, resemble like that of a Down syndrome. This is a very, very important point to remember. Okay. Right. The other name of the Zellweger syndrome is cerebro hepato renal syndrome okay this is used to remember the features of this disorder cerebro hepato renal disorder okay what are the cerebral manifestation it's a disorder of neuronal migration okay neuronal migration disorders are common in the zellweger syndrome number one seizures are a very common presentation of this zellweger syndrome in the newborn period coming to the hepatic symptoms okay it is a cirrhosis of the liver okay which can happen cirrhosis of the liver and renal is characterized the presence of microcyst inside the renal 
tubules as well as the renal parenchyma as well as presence of renal calculi okay so please remember a child having facies like that of a down syndrome but has this typical manifestation cerebro hepato renal syndrome suspect zellweger syndrome okay right and talking about the diagnosis okay you know that it is involved peroxo involved in the uh, oxidation of very long chain fatty acid so what happens to the level yes because of impaired oxidation okay there is a increase in the levels of very long chain fatty acids phytanic acid oxidation is also affected so there will be increased levels of the phytanic acid and third important point to be remembered is because the plasmalogen synthesis affected there is decrease in the plasmalogen okay this is specifically measured as erythrocyte plasmalogen whose levels will be decreased so these are the features of the first condition the zellweger syndrome the second condition i am going to discuss about is the most common disorder of peroxisome what is that yes it is x linked adreno leukodystrophy already i told you it is a x linked recessive disorder it's a x linked recessive disorder and a very very important point to remember is what is the gene which is defective in case of adreno leukodystrophy it is one of the easiest genes to remember you know the reason why because the gene is called as a b c d right it is very easy no yes it is a b c d one gene okay it is a b c d one gene and the protein it codes for is also very easy to remember it is ald protein it's a ald protein okay so just remember the basic fact it's gene a b c d gene and the protein which is ald protein okay right now the clinical features of this disorder are easy to remember once you know the name what is that name it is adreno leukodystrophy i'm just splitting the word into two adreno leukodystrophy right leukodystrophy is something like a problem like a demyelination of the white matter of the brain adreno refers to the adrenal manifestation what is going to happen is that even though the name suggests adreno leukodystrophy the first clinical manifestation of the disease would be the cns problem or the leukodystrophy please make sure you know this fact the first manifestation would be leukodystrophy followed only by adrenal gland problem okay right so what are the leukodystrophy manifestation you will have a school going child who will show a deterioration of school performance deterioration of school performance okay deterioration of school performance the child also will show some personality disturbances child also will show personality disturbances right and this child also has seizures these are the manifestations of leukodystrophy what is going to happen if there is a adrenal problem remember the problem which happens is adrenal insufficiency adrenal gland insufficiency okay this can have lot of manifestation like child having problems of steroid deficiency mineralocorticoid deficiency sometimes these children can also present with fluid and inotrope unresponsive shock so please remember the word x linked adreno leukodystrophy so obviously the diagnosis as i told you earlier there will be increased levels of very long chain fatty acids and increased levels of the phytanic acid and decreased levels of plasmalogen but here a specific point is that if you look at the mri okay or brain of this children you will see that there is increase in the intensity there is increase in the t2 signals okay especially in the parieto occipital region in the parieto occipital region because that is the area which is predominantly affected by adreno leukodystrophy okay right so this is the diagnosis now talking about the treatment there is no specific treatment for adreno leukodystrophy okay however if you detect them early okay if you detect these children early early detection okay and a child who is neurologically normal okay a child who is detected early and is also not having any neurological manifestation you can provide bone marrow transplantation as a treatment option very very important point remember it is only for early detected cases and neurologically normal child neurologically normal child okay in other group of children it is only symptomatic treatment for example in case of a adrenal insufficiency in case of an adrenal insufficiency you have to provide the steroid replacement corticosteroid and the mineral and the mineral corticoids and third is one very very important treatment okay um, is a substance called as a lorenzo oil okay lorenzo oil 
okay lorenzo oil now this lorenzo oil is something like a purified form of olive oil you can remember like that and this lorenzo oil acts by decreasing the levels of very long chain fatty acid in the blood okay basically it is going to inhibit the enzyme which are involved in the production of very long chain fatty acid itself so what happened whenever the lorenzo oil is administered the levels of very long chain fatty acid level will come down in the blood however this is only a temporary treatment it is not a permanent solution generally children with the x-linked adrenal leukodystrophy have a poor prognosis because of unavailability of any specific treatment okay right the third condition i am going to discuss about is the refsum disease is a refsum disease okay right now this refsum disease is a condition of where there is a problem in the phytanic acid oxidase there is a problem in the phytanic acid oxidase what is the importance of this phytanic acid oxidase it is involved in the very important conversion okay which is the oxidation of phytanic acid involved in the oxidation of phytanic acid into alpha hydroxy phytanic acid okay alpha hydroxy phytanic acid this alpha hydroxy phytanic acid is going to be easily excreted from the body it is going to be easily eliminated from the body now what is going to happen in refsum disease there is a deficiency of phytanic acid oxidase so this step is not going to happen so this results in the accumulation of phytanic acid simple okay this results in the accumulation of phytanic acid now this accumulation of phytanic acid can occur in very important parts of the body like it can occupy the eyes okay brain or the nervous system it can also occupy the heart it can also occupy the heart okay right so what is going to happen in the eyes it causes retinitis pigmentosa very very important manifestation often asked in the exam retinitis pigmentosa brain what is going to happen it can cause ataxia it can also cause neuropathy it can also cause neuropathy in the heart it is going to cause cardiomyopathy cardiomyopathy okay right there are some other manifestations of this disorders also like disorder of the smell anosmia these children have anosmia okay anosmia then they can also have a skin condition called ichthyosis ichthyosis okay right so these are the manifestations of the refsum disease obviously the diagnosis is going to be suggested by increased levels of the phytanic acid now how can you remember this complex manifestation i'll tell you a mnemonic to remember this manifestation remember phytanic acid is obtained from phytanic acid source of the phytanic acid is the leafy vegetables okay leafy vegetables and it is also seen in the dairy product but mainly it's a leafy vegetable and one of the leafy vegetables is the and one of the leafy vegetables is the spinach is the spinach so what does the spinach stand for okay s stands for the smell what is that smell manifestation yes anosmia as present p for polyneuropathy p for polyneuropathy i is for the skin condition that is ichthyosis n is for the what is that n for any cases yes n is for the night blindness okay which stands for retinitis pigmentosa is it not okay what is the next a it is for ataxia which is a neurological manifestation again and what is that c for cardiac problem c for cardiac problem h stands for hearing problem which is the sensory neural hearing loss okay which is a sensory neural hearing loss so this completes the refsum disease and the peroxisomal disorders okay so keep following the facebook page the name of the facebook page is crop by dr singaram keep subscribing to the channel you can subscribe to the channel for any further updates okay and also please follow my telegram group where i'll be sharing the one liners and updates okay on a daily basis the telegram group you can search in the telegram as you can search as neat pediatrics you will find the group and join it you will be receiving the updates thank you and have a nice day